introduction. Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy. Today we're going to be talking about gray. I've brought out an array of some of my gray or grayish sweaters and some jewelry and we're going to talk about hats. It's going to be a regular fashion show for you today. So these are not things that I've currently knit. If you've been watching my program for a long time, from time to time, you may have seen some of these. The most recently finished one is the Carol Feller Dasite. But let me do a quick costume change and we'll get this party started. Be right back. Before I stand up and show you the whole thing, let me start by saying from the top down, the hat is a vintage hat. It belonged to my late mother. It is real fur, it's rabbit, it's very soft. I think it's a very pretty hat and how could I throw it away, you know? I don't often wear it because it's really very special, but anyway, I think the sweater is special too. It's a jacket. It's from the 2012 early autumn designer knitting issue of Vogue Knitting Magazine. It's made with a fabric that had perforations in it and you kind of knit the yarn through those holes. And there's, I think if I recall, about five layers of these ruffles on the cuffs as well. The cuffs, it's just three tiers, but I think this was five. And it was really novel to work with, very interesting. Also, um, I'll insert a picture here of the original, the model. I liked how it looked so much in the gray that I tried to replicate it. I couldn't get the exact shade. I bought the yarn that they called for, but when it came in, it wasn't that pearly gray. It was a little bit darker. And I thought, no, I really want this kind of pearly gray. It was hard to get it to match exactly. I did the best that I could. Um, part of the allure for me of gray is that when my hair was black, I wore a lot of black because I thought it, it looked good. Now that my hair is gray, I, I'm finding that gray suits me better. So I don't know if I can get back far enough. I'm tethered by my microphone, but hopefully you get the idea. It comes just to here, a little below the hip. It's more of an outer garment, obviously. That's why I have something underneath. Um, more for fall, yeah, going into winter. I could wear this under a coat. I'm not afraid to, you know, squish this. It's polyester, it'll pop right back up. Um, the little toggle that I purchased, I went into the garment center in New York and I looked for something that was similar to what she had on her model. Couldn't find the exact thing, of course, but um, I think this works. The necklace is a piece from Ren Poku, a jewelry designer originally from the Ivory Coast. Um, I used to import their jewelry. And I think it has enough of an exotic feel to balance the sort of leopardy feeling of the ruffles. The model is wearing something very pretty underneath, which inspired me to get this little sparkly tank top. So this fabric is called Circulo Tecido Trico. And the yarn that I ended up using was Mila Mia Naturally Soft Aaron in the colorway Stone 202. It took almost 13 skeins, 1,100 yards, and I knit it on size four and five U.S. needles or 3.5 and 3.75 millimeters. The beret is Salut Chérie by Sari Nordland. I knit this with, I believe, the leftover yarn from the sweater I showed you before. I'm not sure if it was from this sweater or the previous one. Anyway, 
that's why it's nice to knit with one color. You can mix and match. So uh, easy, lovely beret, love it. This is a sweater that I started in 2018. I don't know why I sat on it. I must have put some finishing touches on it in 2020, but it was largely done before the pandemic. It's called the Swing Front Cardigan by a Saku Noro design team. I knit it in a yarn that I bought at Downtown Yarn when I started my third adventure in knitting. My first adventure was as a youngster. I was about four, four and a half. Then I picked up needles again in my 20s. And then I came back to knitting only a couple of years before the pandemic. So this was the first yarn that I purchased. I went into the shop. The people were so kind to me. I explained to them that I hadn't knit for a quarter of a century and I wasn't sure that I would remember how, but it is like riding a bike, which I never learned to do as a kid, or driving a car, which I did learn to do as a teenager. Um, once you learn things like that and you practice a lot, a lot, a lot, you're not likely to forget them. Such was the case with my knitting. I asked them if I could purchase one ball of yarn. I had this project in mind. So I bought a ball of this and I asked them to just lend me a pair of needles because I knew at home I had all the different size needles from way back. So I sat down at their table and I remembered how to do a long tail cast on. It came back pretty easily. And then when I started knitting, it was a little slow at first, but I would say after the first row of 25 stitches or so, because they told me, oh, you must knit a swatch. I had never knit a swatch before for anything that I'd knit in the 80s. This is something I knit. I'm sure I didn't swatch, but I used the yarn that the pattern called for and the size needle that they called for. So I thought, well, I'm going to be in the ballpark. Anyway, um, it came back to me very quickly. So this sweater will always have a special place in my heart because it got me started on a knitting adventure that to this day has not stopped going. Also, it's just beautiful. The woman in the shop recommended this because I said to her, I want something with a lot of drape. I want it to be really fluid because I thought with my body shape, something stiff like the one that the model is wearing not likely to be flattering for me. So I wanted something very drapey and she hooked me up with something that had cashmere in it. So this is Lana Grossa cashmere. I'm reading off my screen. Um, cashmere 16 fine. I used six skeins, 2,100 yards. And this color is light gray tweed. I also bought a skein of this darker charcoal color because I knew that I might not have enough and I also thought it would be nice to do contrast in color. I did the top stitching. The pattern did not call for that. But I really wanted to have that two-tone look. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's a very unusual construction. The arm is down here. And instead of having a shoulder, it starts here, if I remember correctly. When I take it off, I'll show it to you. It's just very, very unusual. And it's kind of tricky to get it to hang right, but it's a nice lightweight, um, kind of warm if you, if you want it to be. And of course I could wear a scarf. So let me try and step back. I'm still tethered to my microphone. I don't know how far away I can get. Um, this is short in the front, and then it comes down into, what do they call that, shark fin? But, you know, it's longer on the side than it is in the front. And it's shorter in the back and longer on the side. So I mean, let me try and get a little further back. I'm going to take it off and show you. It's got a little bit of a swing to it. So here's the sleeve. I 
And that's the back. But there is no shoulder seam up here. It wraps around to the front. And there is a seam there. So from the sleeve to the opening of the front. I don't remember if it was knit down from there or exactly how, how it came together, but it was knit in pieces. I can see I have a side seam. Um, let me hang it on a hanger. Maybe I can fit the whole thing in the screen. Uh, there you can see. So the sides are long, the front is short. The front is short. And I did all around the bottom a band of the charcoal as well. So I hope you get the idea. Very drapey and super soft, like, like a cashmere. But because it's cashmere mixed with something else, it's not pure cashmere, it didn't have cashmere price, which since I needed how many balls? Six skeins of it. Um, yeah, I don't think that the price was out of sight. Very, very lovely yarn. Really soft, squishy. You can see it. It, you know, it's just so um. Thin isn't the right word, but it doesn't require a lot of bulk to give you the warmth. I knit kind of a dense fabric. I like to knit a dense fabric to avoid pilling, and I also like how that fabric looks better. So it gives me something that's warm and yet very fluid. Up next, I'm wearing the Maya Paita Maida Pullover. I don't know how you pronounce any of that, by Mari Mulnonen. I knit this a while back too. It's very, very warm. I added on the fingerless mitts that I recently made by Suzanne Bryan because I wanted to give you the effect of this would be reserved for the absolute coldest days, like almost like a ski sweater, which is why I put the the beret on with it because it's really cozy. Everything about it is cozy and it's very long. I love this wave. These are like cables, but they're just a very thin cable and they're not crossing over. Um, but I love how it goes down into the ribbon. The cable just flows right down in. Again, I don't know if I can back up far enough. Well, there you sort of see it. Same thing on the sleeve. This cabling runs right down into the ribbing. It's two by two ribbing. The yarn I used was Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Aran. I used 11 skeins over a thousand yards um, in colorway nine. And I put a sequence of snaps down around here. It opens up all the way to here. That's how you get into it. It's not just a pullover, although it has enough give that it could have been. But I guess you could unsnap it and leave it open. It would be a different look. Raglan sleeves, very nice raglan detailing. And on the back as well. The earrings that I'm wearing are Mexican. They're very filigree. Lots of moving parts. And I have several necklaces on here. But I thought the fluidity of these chains and ball chain. And there's actually ball bearing balls in this um, glass globe. This is from France. But I thought all of this had the motion to go with the motion of the sweater.
I almost forgot to show you that the sweater is done in reverse stockinettes. You see the pearl bumps on this side, the side that is usually the right side in this particular sweater is on the inside. So I forgot to mention that. That's so that the cables will pop out. It was a little tricky because you're always wondering, am I doing it right? Am I on the right side now? And next up, it's hard to snap with fingerless mitts on, but you get the idea. Boom. This next jacket was completed recently. It's Carol Feller's Dacite. I knit it with the fiber company Lore, which I bought in Paris, you might recall, January of this year. Thanks again to Enrico for hooking me up. I probably would not have ever selected such a yarn because when I felt it, it felt a little rustic to me, but actually when I knit it up, it's just the right texture for an outer jacket. The color is called Confident. And I used four and a half skeins on a size seven US needle or four and a half millimeter. It's also a little on the longer side below the hip. And it's very, it feels like it's very warm. It'll be great for a very cool fall day maybe even in the early days of winter. The hat is vintage. I can't tell you too much about it. It wasn't in my family I purchased this hat. But you can see I kind of like that two-tone effect. So the hat is trimmed in black. It's really got a very nice feel to it. Um, it's, I don't know if it's wool, if it's felted, but it's sort of between wool and velvet. It's really, really nice. This part is like a black roguey ribbon, but this part, very soft. I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this sweater. The color is just so basic. It goes with virtually everything in my wardrobe. I still wear a lot of black, so you know, it'll be great over black, but it'll be good over other shades of gray or anything really so i think this is very classic very very basic um yeah let me show you let me show you this because again like the previous sweater pearl bumps now this is not reverse stockinette this is garter stitch and the sleeves are done in stockinette but everything is uh garter including the cuff Love it. If you like to do the knit stitch, this is the sweater for you. There's a lot of knitting. This sweater was knit in one continuous piece, no seams. So there's no shoulder seam. There's no seam for the sleeves. The stitches are picked up and then you knit down from the top down. Uh, the only thing is you go back and you do this trim the trim down the front is contiguous. It's knit at the same time that you're knitting the sweater. It's really a couture piece. Every aspect of it is just streamlined, elegant. It's such a great, really great sweater. I can't say enough about it. And the yarn was like the perfect combination for this. It has a good amount of body. It's not, you know, I didn't want this to be drapey like the cashmere, part cashmere sweater that I showed you, the lighter shade of gray. You know, I wanted this to have some stiffness to it and Enrico helped me select just the right yarn. Okay. You're starting to see the hat boxes behind me. I'll show you those at the end. This is a sweater that I knit in 1985. That was my second knitting adventure I alluded to before. The hat belonged to my late mother. It's white mink, very oxidized from age. 
This sweater has a bat wing, like a dolman sleeve. It's a French design. I think the yarns might have been French. It was done with two shades of Angora, the peach color and this burgundy color. A small ball of it cost a lot back in the 80s. I don't remember, but it was a very teeny little ball, smaller than a mini. But it's just a little bit of it. And I thought it was worth having because I think it's such a an, an unusual sweater. And this yarn is some kind of a marled yarn. It's wool. It's a very comfortable weight though. Let me back up to show you. This would not be for the coldest day. It looks like a lot of sweater, but it's not hot inside of this at all. So I'm happy it still fits. I've definitely gotten use out of it down through the years. And I just think it's very unusual and it works with gray. So even though it's not solid gray, like some of the others I've shown you today, I would put this in the gray category. It has a little bit of a mauve cast to it. Let me get it up close for you to see that. I don't know if the color's coming up well on the screen. So I'm down to the very last sweater. Let me do a quick change. I'll be right back. Last but not least, we have the fashionable slit neckline by Anchor. This sweater was first introduced to me by my guest, Sophie. I'll leave a link up here for you to go back and watch that episode. It's knit on size one and three U.S. needles or 2.25 and 3.25 millimeters, six stitches to the inch. The yarn that I used was Nurturing Fibers Eco Lush. And they had a lot of different colors. I showed Jen this vintage hat that I have. I showed it to her over the internet and I asked her to please match up a yarn color. And you have to know how hard that is to do. Even in person, it's difficult. But she did a pretty good job because she was very clever. She asked me, does it read more purple? Does it read more blue? It's not... You know, it's not exactly gray. It has like a steel blue kind of coloring to it. And I knew this also was in the sort of blue category, but I think she did a really respectable job of matching the color up. So unlike the other sweaters I've shown you, this one is obviously not for winter. Um, it's really very soft, very lightweight. These openings, the openings make it super suitable for summer. Now, just in case you're hankering for another hat, I'll be right back with a different one. I love wearing this hat because it always gets a lot of attention. It's so unusual. It too is vintage. This one did not belong to my mother. I found this one somewhere in my travels. I don't remember if I bought it online or if I saw it in a store, but Whenever things have feathers and movement, I, I just love it. So uh, before I wrap up with you, yeah, let me talk a little bit about hat boxes. This hat box was custom made for me. It was a gift from my mother around the time of my marriage. And my mother gave me a beautiful hat as a gift inside of this box. I keep that hat in a different box now because I have a limited amount of space and sometimes I need to put more than one hat in a box. So the white hat that you saw me wearing in the beginning with the big feather, that gets housed in here because it requires a lot of space. At my wedding, I had other things that were made by this woman that kind of harmonized with this. There was a basket in the ladies' room with, you know, the necessary supplies that had all this kind of trim on it. So it's really, it's, it's a lovely thing I'm happy to own. 
This one belonged to my mother. It's from Saks Fifth Avenue, but there's a movie, I think it's How to Marry a Millionaire, where I'm pretty sure it was Marilyn Monroe who goes shopping with one of the other women. Maybe it was just her, I, I can't recall now, but they come back with all of these boxes with clothing in it. I don't think there was a hat box, but it was this motif. And they said they'd been shopping at Bergdorf Goodman. Well, I knew that that was artistic license because this is the Sex Fifth Avenue motif. This is a hat box I picked up somewhere at one of those, like a Michaels kind of a store a long time ago. I keep several hats in this one. And I don't know if you can see, I have tags on here identifying what they are because when I have them all stacked up, I'm apt to forget what's in which. It doesn't say it anywhere on here, but I know having grown up in Philadelphia that this was the logo of the Blum store. It was a very elegant store and all of their packaging had this motif on it. That was one of my mother's hat boxes as well. And then this black box, this black hat box is from Vincent and Bill. Oops. I believe that the bill refers to Bill Cunningham. He was the photographer, the fashion photographer for the New York Times for many years until his passing, known to ride around New York on his bicycle. Um, but for a while he was designing hats with another fellow. So the hat that I bought that came in here was not a Vincent and Bill hat, but I, they had that box. So I have obviously many other hat boxes, but I just brought down a few to show you that these hats were housed in. If you enjoyed this episode, let me remind you that there's over a hundred other episodes. So up in this corner, you're going to see a box. You can click on that and you'll have a whole list of other things that you can go and watch. I love sharing some time with you today. I hope you're knitting up a storm and remember, if you're going to Rhinebeck, I will be on Podcaster Hill around 12, 1230 on Saturday, October 21st. Please look for me. I'll be very, very delighted to meet you. Until then, everyone, take care. See you next time.